a broad spectrum disinfectant, kills 99.5% of disease causing germs and works in 10 minutes. Hello, I'm Alma Angeles, and you're watching Eagle News International on tonight's headlines. Dr. Cynthia Saloma of the University of the Philippines Philippine Genome Center reported that 17 Delta variant cases are already detected in the country, all from international travelers. The Tokyo Olympics and Paralympics organizers agreed to allow up to 10,000 spectators to enter each game's venue, provided it doesn't exceed 50% of a venue's capacity. And we have an update from our EBC Japan Bureau. And Indonesia also in the throes of a huge wave with infections stopping 2 million and some 55,000 deaths so far. Our EBC correspondent in Jakarta will give us an update. And His Excellency Yaroslav Chepankiewicz, Charge Affairs of the Embassy of Poland in Manila, talks about Poland's reopening of its economy and the Filipino community. First, here in the country, Dr. Cynthia Saloma of the University of the Philippines Philippo Philippine Genome Center reported 17 Delta variant cases were detected in the country, all from international travelers. Dr. Saloma said that strict enforcement of border controls must be imposed to curb the spread of the variants. Take a look. Ngayon po, meron tayong 17 all-in-all na mga Delta variants na na genome sequencing, na sequencing dito sa Philippine Genome Center at may um, lahat po sila puros international travelers. So far po, we have not detected any community spread. So ano po yung outsta o ano po ba yung mga um, karakteristik nitong uh, Delta variant? So please, uh, tingnan natin yung r not Ang r not po, ito po yung level or uh, measure ng contagiousness no, ng isang variant. So for example, yung original virus that was first described in Wuhan, pwede po siya infect ng dalawang tao. Tapos yung may D614 gene mutation na nag-cause po na ang um, first wave sa Europe noong June last year, pwede po siyang maka-infect ng tatlong tao. Samantalang po itong more highly transmissible na sinasabi natin UK or Alpha variant, pwede po siyang maghawa ng apat o limang tao. Pero yung Delta variant po, kaya niya maghawa ng up to eight persons. Kaya kailangan po tayo talagang um, pagtibayin yung ating mga border controls at mag-sika uh, po tayo na hindi pa makapasok, na hindi makapasok, at saka hindi po ito makaspend sa atin. Meanwhile, the use of face shields is no longer required outdoors, according to Malacanang today, amid confusion over the wearing of the said protective shields to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Prior to the IATF's uh, appeal, presidential spokesperson Harry Roque confirmed that President Duterte decided that people only be required to wear face shields in hospitals. Take a look. So, yung mga nagtatanong, kailangan pa ba ang face shield? Ang malinaw po ganito, ha? Hindi na po kinakailangan ng face shield sa labas kasi hindi naman po inapila yan ng IATF. Ang inapila lang ng, ng IATF yung pagsuot ng face shield sa loob kasama na po sa mga malls at iba pang mga commercial establishments at saka sa mga pampublikong transportasyon. In a Twitter post on Wednesday, Senate President Vicente Soto III said President Duterte has agreed that the public should only be required to wear, to wear a face shield when they go to hospitals. Soto, during a Senate committee of the whole hearing on Tuesday, noted that the Philippines is the only country in the world requiring the use of face shields in public spaces. Roque earlier said there is a scientific basis that wearing both face masks and face shields contributes to the substantial reduction of COVID infections in the country. Now, Indonesia is also in the throes of a huge wave of infection, stopping 2 million and some 55,000 deaths so far. Here's December Paras joining us live from Jakarta. Hello, December. Hello, Alma. Indonesia passed 2 million coronavirus cases on Monday as infection rates soar. 
as infection rates soar and hospitals are flooded with new patients, prompting warnings that the Southeast Asian nation's health crisis could spiral out of control. The unwanted milestone comes after daily case rates more than doubled in recent weeks and authorities identified the presence of highly infectious COVID-19 variants. On Monday, official figures showed that Indonesia had recorded a daily record high of 14,536 cases, taking the total to just over 2 million with nearly 55,000 deaths among a population of nearly 270 million. But those figures are widely thought to be a severe undercount due to low testing and contact tracing. Some experts have said that official cases may only be about 10% of the real number. Case numbers are spiking as Indonesia grapples with new virus strains, including the highly infectious Delta variant first identified in India. The rise has also been blamed on millions traveling across the Muslim-majority nation at the end of Ramadan, despite an official ban on the annual migration. Hospital occupancy rates have soared to over 75% in Jakarta and other hard-hit areas, while funerals for COVID-19 victims have also reportedly jumped. The Indonesian Medical Association said the variants appear to be sickening younger people. Widespread rule breaking on mask wearing and other health protocols as well as vaccine skepticism are among factors cited for the worsening situation. The World Health Organization has called for tougher movement restrictions. Back to you, Alma. All right. Thank you very much, December, for your update and uh, please stay safe. Thank you, Alma, and stay safe too in Manila. This is our... Reporting from Jakarta, Indonesia, this is December Paras. We live in interesting times. Meanwhile, the Tokyo Olympics and Paralympics organizers agreed to allow up to 10,000 spectators to enter each game's venue. We have an update from Dennis Liu. Dennis. Good evening, Alma and CJ. Japan will allow some spectators at next month's Summer Olympics. Organizers will let domestic fans attend the games. Spectators will be required to give a negative virus test. Up to 10,000 fans will be allowed at Tokyo Olympic events. で、感染状況や医療状況に急激な変化がある場合にはですね、5者で協議をして状況に応じては無観客も含めて対応を検討する必要があるとこのように考えております。The uh, IOC will fully support uh, uh, your uh, decision and uh, will fully contribute to make uh, these uh, games uh, safe and secure for the Japanese people and for all uh, the participants. Now, if COVID-19 cases rise again or another state of emergency in Tokyo is declared, Tokyo 2020 President Seiko Hashimoto said organizers will re-examine their decision on fans. Japan has seen a comparatively small virus outbreak with nearly 14,500 deaths despite avoiding the harsh lockdown seen elsewhere. But the vaccine rollout has been slower than in many developed countries, only picking up speed in recent days. Around 65% of the population is now fully vaccinated. Organizers also face a skeptical public. Polls have regularly shown most Japanese would prefer to see the games delayed further or canceled altogether. Recent surveys suggest a softening of opposition with more in favor of holding the games than canceling it if postponement is not offered as an option. A survey published Monday found around a third of respondents want the games to happen, up from 14% last month though a majority still prefer further delay or cancellation. Organizers say strict rules will keep both athletes and the public safe. And IOC Chief Thomas Back that well over 80% of people staying in the Olympic Village will be vaccinated. Athletes will be barred from contact with the public and risk being kicked out of the games if they violate rules, including mask wearing and daily virus tests. This is the latest for now reporting from Tokyo, Japan. This is Dennis Liu. We live in interesting times. 
Now back here in the country, Health Undersecretary Maria Rosario Villarre said various factors have given rise to the increase in new coronavirus cases in Visayas and Mindanao. Some of them are the clustering of cases in workplaces and prisons. Here's more. Clustering of so po sa Mindanao, nakikita natin, and not just in Mindanao but in Visayas, uh, unang-una, lagi po natin sinasabi, pag may tumataas po na kaso sa bawat lugar, we need to look at multitude of factors because we know that there are these different factors uh, which causes the transmission of the virus. So unang-una po, meron po tayong pang-individual at pang-komunidad yung pagpapatupad po natin ng minimum health protocols. At pag tinignan natin, there are reports already coming to us no, from our different regional epidemiology and surveillance units na talagang mukhang nagkaroon ng complacency no, sa pagpapatupad ng health protocols. Pangalawa, meron na ho tayong nanote na clustering of cases in these different areas na meron hong mga tumataas na kaso. May identified po tayo na clustering of cases in workplaces, clustering of cases in prisons, so nakikita ho natin na yung chain of transmission hindi ho natin na aagad at hindi po natin na aagapan. Kaya po nagkakaroon tayo ng clustering of cases. And the third, uh, totoo po na meron na ho tayo na detect na mga variants sa iba't ibang lugar dito sa Visayas and Mindanao. And this can also be drivers of the infection. But let us not just rely or let us not just uh, say that it's just because of the variants. There are a multitude of factors. Kailangan po kapag tayo ay tumitingin sa response natin, it's a continuum. So we will need to address not just the variants but also the other forms of response that we are having. So sana po yung ating mga kababayan tuloy-tuloy po ang pagtulong sa ating gobyerno para mapababa na po natin ang mga kaso sa Visayas and Mindanao. India opened up free vaccinations to all adults in an attempt to bolster its inoculation drive. The country's vaccination drive has significantly slowed in recent months due to a shortage of jabs and hesitancy, even as it battled a vicious surge in cases in April and May that overwhelmed the healthcare system in many places. Now, case numbers have since fallen sharply and the authorities have again relaxed many restrictions, sparking fears of another wave. The government had expanded the vaccine rollout to include all adults aged below 45 on May 1, but states and private hospitals had to procure and buy the shots themselves for the younger age group, leading to confusion and some shortages. But New Delhi later changed tack, announcing it would procure 75% of vaccine supplies and distribute them to states so that they can inoculate people for free. And so far, it has administered 275 million shots with barely 4% of people fully vaccinated. The government aims to inoculate all of India's almost 1.1 billion adults by the end of the year. We go now to Europe. Earlier we were, or staying here in the country, earlier we were able to talk to His Excellency Yaroslav Chepankovic, a charge the affairs of the Embassy of Poland in Manila, and he talked about Poland's reopening of its economy and the Filipino community. Here are some excerpts. Thank you. Take a look. Everything is going to normality. We are now, um, as a European Union, uh, uh, we are people may almost freely travel uh, uh, with the what we call the green passport, mm -hmm. and uh, it's still um, impl full implementation is still ongoing. Yes. Because if you are vaccinated, uh, I have QR code and I go to the, you know, airport, I just pass my QR code. It's mm -hmm. written, for example, in Spain. So they know that I am vaccinated, for example, with the Pfizer. Yes. And it means that I am not going to the quarantine into the quarantine as in the Philippines. <laughs> <laughs> so this is slowly, we, we are getting out of the COVID. I, I am quite optimistic and uh, new data with the arrival, you know, massive arrival of the vaccine. Uh, so uh, you, you mentioned about the green passport. Can you tell me more about this, sir? As we, with the uh, green passport, are we seeing uh, uh, a promising reopening in the coming weeks? And uh, what is the present status of uh, travel restrictions over there in uh, Poland? 
border shutdowns? Are they going to ease up a bit? It's, you, you know, from, from the people coming from the outside of the European Union is quite different. Mm -hmm. But at least we're now implementing this green passport that is mainly this QR. Mm -hmm. The QR code is if you are, for example, um, mm -hmm. vaccinated with one shot, it's for a Johnson & Johnson and with a two shots. With the uh, rest of the vaccine that are authorized in, um, in, the, in your country. So it means that you may freely travel. The problem is when the people are vaccinated with the, the vaccine that is not authorized, not by the European Union or by national um, authorities. Um, I think that you know what I mean. It's mainly, it's concerns some uh, Sinovac and uh, Sputnik vaccines. Mm. That there is a lot of doubt about efficiency of this uh, vaccines and uh, a human reaction on uh, on these vaccines that may uh, vary uh, according to the individual persons. Mm -hmm. So this is a kind of the obstacle. So uh, uh, the the risk the risk is that if someone is vaccinated with the unauthorized in Europe vaccines, he must pass through the whole quarantine. Uh, let's uh, talk about travel. Uh, on the side, airlines, particularly national carriers, have suffered losses due to uh, shutdowns and travel restrictions. May I ask how the national carrier of Poland is coping? Yes, no, you know, it's, uh, the, this company is struggling. Of course, they are supported by the states and the European Commission. Mm -hmm. is giving the green light for a state aid to the to these companies. But um, as you see, of course, the companies were hard mm -hmm. by the COVID. And, uh, uh, and what we feel is an increase of price of the ticket. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's twice. And uh, in terms of the people to people, uh, you know, relation is very bad. Mm -hmm. So it means it's uh, hurting the tourism, and the tourism is very important for the Philippines as a pro perspective business um, uh, on the line on um, on the archipelago. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is the one problem. Mm -hmm. Of course, this uh, it's not so. I would say I don't know the detailed um, data, but. Um, um, uh, uh, airlines try to compensate it. Mm -hmm. And it means that they, they are taking, even if in terms of the people, flights are uh, sometimes empty. I, I fly such uh, flights that we were 10 people and the big Airbus, mm -hmm. but uh, there was a cargo and the prices of the cargo tripled for a consumer negative. Uh, element. So there is, I would say that there is no winners in this in this story. So uh, yes, that's right. Uh, airlines have been transformed into most most airlines, yeah, have been transformed into cargo carriers. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, but uh, I, on the topic of business and trade trade relations between our two countries, if I'm if I'm uh, Right, Poland's uh, Poland ex exports dairy products, mechanical equipment, paper here in the Philippines. While we export to Poland electronics, and we also have a growing um, Philippine furniture market over there. Has the pandemic uh, affected our trade relations? That uh, yes, because the in international chains of cooperation uh, are partially broken or damaged. Mm -hmm. So there is a disturbance in the flow of the, even if something is produced in the Philippines to be exported to Poland, but some parts are coming from another countries to mm -hmm. construct it. So it means this whole chain of the uh, interdependence are shaking. So I am sure that it will, uh, it, uh, it, it's, it is affecting, it will affect 
But generally to 2020, our, um, uh, our turnover, tur turnover balance with the Philippines tripled. So we were on the um, on the we were going up with everything. Uh, so the jump is very essential, and uh, I would say it's I'm I'm very let's say worried about the COVID effect because it it's already both economies and economies 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 of every country are hard by this. So I think that at least we will uh, have it this year frozen or smaller. I don't expect any kind uh, of the growth. In, in some uh, sectors, yes, with the airplanes and helicopters, it will increase because we are provided of the um, Black, Hawks, Black Hawk helicopters S-70. Mm. I uh, to the Filipino Air Forces, so this will flow because there is a priority, you know, from the for for the Filipinos to get this machine as uh, faster as is possible. All right. Uh, also, Poland and the Philippines has a uh, healthy cultural exchange. This, in terms of film, in terms of uh, books, paintings. How are our cultural relations during this pandemic? Do, do, you have any, uh, do you have any virtual alternative sections where we show or discuss the arts? Or uh, have our relations moved into Zooming now? <laughs> you know, art is um, a cultural cooperation is something um, um, uh, that it's missing from my point uh, from the, in bilater bilateral relations. Mm -hmm. Of course, they are, uh, but it's not the, uh, uh, the level that I uh, want to have. Mm -hmm. uh, so we as the embassy, we, uh, now we are engaging the, the mainly chat with the, the students exchange Let's uh, go to another topic now with regards to the Filipinos in Poland. How are they? How many Filipinos are there in Poland? Uh, not, not much. I think that my guess is that this year we will have the 3,000 okay. around something uh, because we had to 100, uh, 1,700, according to statistics, something mm -hmm. around, I don't remember them very well, mm -hmm. but looking at the uh, volume of the visas that we deliver uh, in the consulate, mm -hmm. uh, I think that we will uh, deliver at, le at least um, 1,000 visa uh, for the uh, Filipino uh, overseas workers. And according to um, previous calculations, it, we were calculating that it can go even to per year to 20,000, mm -hmm. but COVID stopped it. Mm. It means we are not facing uh, such uh, huge uh, amount of people, uh, you know, storming the consulate uh, because of the COVID. And so the, 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 there is a less than, than we expected, mm -hmm. uh, mainly because the problem of traveling in the Philippines, so the people can't reach the consulate, frankly speaking, or um, and it's complicated. It's much more easy for the people or that are in Luzon or uh, in uh, Cebu, Mindanao, where you have uh, international airports and the connection is possible, you know, uh, without, you know, big troubles. So, but uh, uh, we are prepared uh, for increase uh, of the application. Starting from the next month, month we open in Makati, 
visa center. That is, they will be outsourcing a part of the operation with visa, and it uh, and we are doing it to to face and to be prepared for, uh, uh, you know, to flow huge amount uh, uh, visa applica applications to to the consulate. So. For this, we are prepared, and we know that will increase. Um, it's uh, from one part. It's uh, uh, there is a pressure inside of the Filipino society to go abroad because it's it was already before the COVID, but now COVID brought the people at home, mm -hmm. so they don't uh, with the massive return of uh, Filipino workers to to the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And and the second factor is that Poland is, uh, I think, one of the best countries in the Europe in terms of the economic development. So even if it, if our economy is slowing, but we are the best in the European Union in terms of the how we are economically we are tackling the issue of the COVID, it means that literally... That exciting uh, culture and historical stride through the history of Poland and the Philippines, and I really enjoyed that. Thank you so much for your time, uh, Charjay, the fair. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, do you have any last message for our uh, Filipino friends who are watching you right now? I think uh, on, only one. Uh, be proud, Filipino, of your national culture. Don't look for American culture as a, a future and say this is the old way, this is the parent waves, and we don't want it, we want to be modern and so on. We already passed this period. And uh, so we are now, I think that we are proud. Folk culture, everything. Now it's a part. So as well embrace your um, history fully not not look only to a kind of the legendary you know story of lapula it's not true it's um, it's blurring the whole history of the philippines and the complex complexity complexity of uh, to be filipino so uh, Study the history, try to understand your culture, and be proud of it. Mm -hmm. You are unique. Thank you. Thank you very much. We hope to see you again and speak to you again, sir. Very. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Salamat. And you can watch more of that interview, the complete interview on ASEAN and Focus today at uh, 2 p.m. and you can watch it on YouTube. And we'll be back with more right after this break. This portion is brought to you by North Luzon Express Terminal. Mula noon hanggang ngayon, gabay natin ang MTRCB ratings sa matalino at responsabling panonood. Sa tamang pagsunod sa MTRCB ratings, ginagawa nating ligtas at makabuluhan ang panonood ng bawat miyembro ng pamilyang Pilipino. Pas man ang panahon hanggang may pamilyang Pilipino, anjan ang MTRCB. Protect yourself and loved ones. Use Protect Plus Gold, a broad-spectrum disinfectant that kills 500 strains of bacteria, fungi, and viruses such as coronavirus and other disease-causing microorganisms. Also potent against viruses in pets. It kills 99.9% .9 of disease-causing germs and works in 10 minutes. Dissolve one teaspoon in one liter of water. Apply on areas for disinfection or use it for misting. Protect Plus Gold.
Hong Kong pro-democracy newspaper Apple Daily said today its board will decide whether to close the publication at their next meeting on Friday after an asset freeze by authorities using a new national security law left the outspoken media group unable to pay its staff. Apple Daily has long been a thorn in Beijing's side with unapologetic support for the city's pro-democracy movement and caustic criticism of China's leaders. Its owner, Jimmy Lai, is in jail and was among the first to be charged under the security law after its imposition last year. Its chief editor and CEO were detained last week and its finances frozen under the law which Beijing has used to stamp out dissent in the international business hub. Rival outlets Now TV and Oriental Daily both reported, citing sources, that Apple Daily's board has all but decided to close the paper with the final publication date to be announced at the next meeting on Friday. In an interview with CNN, a senior aide to Lai said last week's freeze order by the city security chief had crippled the newspaper's ability to do business. He said, quote, Our problem at Apple Daily is not that we don't have funds. We have $50 million in the bank. Our problem is the Secretary of Security and the police will not let us pay our reporters. They will not let us pay our staff. And they will not let us pay our vendors. They have locked up our accounts. Lai, 73, is in prison for attending democracy protests in 2019. He faces a life sentence if convicted of national security crimes. Meanwhile, Taiwan received 2.5 million doses of Moderna vaccine from the United States at the uh, Taiwan International Airport, with health officials holding up signs saying, thank you. The move is likely to draw disapproval from Beijing, which claims the self-ruled island. Take a look. A friend in need is a friend indeed. Now, China expressed fury earlier this month when U.S. senators visited Taiwan and announced the vaccine donation amid simmering tensions between Washington and Beijing. The number of shots is about three times as many as announced during the U.S. delegation visit to Taiwan. Taipei has accused Beijing of hampering its efforts to secure enough doses. China's ruling Communist Party has never controlled Taiwan, but it views the island as part of its territory and has vowed to one day seize it by force if necessary. Beijing has heaped economic, military and diplomatic pressure on Taiwan in recent years and keeps it locked out of international bodies, such as the World Health Organization. Washington remains Taiwan's biggest ally, but it doesn't maintain full diplomatic relations with Taipei because it officially recognizes Beijing. In other news now to the U.S., nine children and an adult were killed in a fiery multi-vehicle crash on an Alabama highway as heavy storms lashed the southeastern U.S., according to authorities on Sunday. Saturday's crash on an interstate highway near the city of Greenville involved at least 15 vehicles and was probably caused by hydro planning under torrential rains, according to Butler County Coroner Wayne Garlock. Now, Storm Claudette dumped up to 12 inches of rain in the Gulf Coast region on Saturday. It was blamed for at least two other deaths. The dead in the crash included a father and his nine-month-old daughter in an SUV and eight occupants of a van aged 4 to 17 from a girl's ranch for neglected and abused children, according to local media. He said at least two of the vehicles involved were 18-wheel trucks and that four or five other people had suffered non-fatal injuries. The driver of the van was pulled out alive by a bystander, according to witnesses. The bystander then tried to help the children but was prevented by a fierce fire engulfing the vehicle, according to Garlock. The van driver was identified as Candace Gully, director of the girls' farm in Tallapoosa County, an official with the state ranch system, 
told AI.com the SUV driver was identified as Cody Fox, 29, an emergency management worker from Tennessee. His fiancé was injured in the wreck. Garlock said the crash scene was in an area notorious for hydroplaning as Interstate 65 curves down a steep hill. Storm Claudette, later downgraded to a tropical depression, has dumped heavy rain across the southeastern United States. Meanwhile, for the first time since the pandemic started, the U.S.-Mexico border opens to let migrant families from both sides hug their relatives on the Bravo River. Hundreds of families reunited briefly thanks to this annual event supported by the Border Network for Human Rights. Take a look. Son tres minutos, pero van a ser los tres minutos más felices de nuestra vida para toda la gente que estamos aquí y de aquel lado, porque vamos a volver a vernos y abrazarnos, a sentirnos como familia. Oye, yo creo que. Yo creo porque estoy aquí, ¿verdad? ¿no? Porque la señora. No sé, es que voy a ver cuando está aquí. ¿Se le va a tener zona? Sí. Son 200 familias, son más de 2000 personas que están llegando juntos de los dos lados de la frontera. Uh, el mensaje central es que no podemos permitir que se sigan separando familias. Tenemos que construir un puente aquí en el río para que, las, para que las madres se junten con sus hijos, esposos que están separados. Esto no tendría que estar sucediendo si tuviéramos una diferente política fronteriza, una nueva política migratoria. Oscar-winning actress Angelina Jolie visited a refugee camp in Burkina Faso, sheltering thousands of Malians who have fled jihadist violence in the region. Take a look. Today, one in 95 people are forcibly displaced. One percent of humanity. And the numbers are rising. We have to wake up to the track we are on globally, with so many conflicts raging, and the very real possibility that climate change will force tens, if not hundreds of millions of people to have to leave their homes in the future with no possibility of return. So it is not that we are at a breaking point. We are broken. The truth is, we are not doing half of what we could and should to find solutions to enable refugees to return home or to support host countries like Burkina Faso. Coping for years with a fraction of the humanitarian aid needed to provide basic support and protection. The burden is falling on displaced people whose rights and life chances are stolen. Since 2012, around 22,000 refugees of various nationalities have found refuge in Burkina Faso, including many Malians, fleeing the abuses of jihadist groups in northern and central Mali. But Burkina has in turn become the target of attacks by Al-Qaeda and Islamic State-linked jihadists since 2015, which have left more than 1,400 dead and forced a million people to flee their homes. And the news continues here on Eagle News. We'll be right back. Innovation. Digital disruption. 
globalization. Startups, micro, small and medium enterprises, as well as large corporations, all face interesting challenges in the market today. Peek into the world of exciting opportunities and partnerships to drive growth with the latest business news and information. We are open for business. Your weekly dose of entrepreneurial inspiration to update you on the latest developments in the world of business. Get up close and personal with CEOs and thought leaders to help you discover valuable insights Sharpen your instincts for smart decision-making with the latest markets and economic trends, disruptive ideas, global innovation, social entrepreneurship, and other leading-edge business ideas. Join the conversations to create a more vibrant environment for entrepreneurship. Catch Open for Business from Vision to Action. The Bureau of Internal Revenue still has not backtracked on its position to impose a 150% hike on the corporate income tax rate of private schools. According to a report from the Business Mirror, Finance Secretary Carlos Dominguez III clarified that what the BIR corrected through issuing Revenue Memorandum Circular or RMC 76-2021 were footing errors in the illustrative examples under Revenue Regulation or RRS 2021 or RR5 2021. The finance chief no. made the clarification after House Deputy Speaker and Cagayan de Oro City Representative Rufus Rodriguez lauded the BIR on Friday for rectifying its error in imposing a higher tax rate on private schools through the new revenue memorandum circular. The private education sector has earlier urged BIR to halt the imposition of a higher tax rate of 25% from the current 10%. Private schools have already filed a petition before the Court of Tax Appeals in a bid to stop the implementation of BIR's RR5 2021, which they said if implemented will have widespread consequences to stakeholders of the private education sector at a time when the private education sector is fighting for its survival amidst the plunging enrollment caused by the pandemic. The first Royal Caribbean cruise ship to start test cruises is scheduled to set sail today, according to the Royal Caribbean blog. Freedom of the Seas is in Miami to begin a short test cruise, We're which also is... We're seeing some cruise lines sort of saying, hey, vaccinations might not be required. So it is voluntary, but you're not going to have that same cruise experience on board. You might be required to wear a mask, for example, and people who are vaccinated. Freedom of the Seas is in Miami to begin a short test cruise, which is a necessary step for revenue cruises to begin. Royal Caribbean will have 100% of its crew members fully vaccinated on all its sailings. Royal Caribbean announced a test cruise for Freedom of the Seas back in late May, and she will sail between June 20 and 22. If all goes to plan, Freedom of the Seas is scheduled to begin revenue sailings from Miami on July 2, which would make her the first Royal Caribbean cruise ship to restart revenue sailings from the U.S. Back in the U.S., fire investigators have determined that the Morgan Canyon fire burning southwest of Grantsville was caused by a small airplane crash that killed both the pilot and the passenger. According to Fox News, Unified Fire Authority Public Information Officer Matthew McFarland could not comment directly on that fire because it's out of UFA's jurisdiction. But he did say it could be classified as human-caused start. He said that with the extreme drought, 
all it takes is a small spark to quickly start a fire. According to ABC News, the flat fire is currently burning through 14,443 acres and is now 15% contained as of June 20. According to statewide fire officials, meanwhile, as the fire burns in Enterprise and Cedar City, local community members and fire officials were able to locate and move 50 cow calf pairs and three bulls from the BLM grazing allotment affected by the fire. And as crews continue to tackle the flames, evacuations have since been lifted. And Nebraska highway roads buckled, are buckling from the heat. Take a look. The Nebraska Department of Transportation said the roads in the state can be prone to blow-ups. Police were checking out the damage and keeping cars from driving over the damaged portion of the road. On Wednesday, much of the area was above 100 degrees. Surface temperatures had hit 120 degrees Fahrenheit or 48.9 degrees Celsius. And here are some images of damage and flooding as a violent storm hits the south of Paris with heavy rain and wind gusts of up to 137 kilometers per hour. Take a look. Finally, in our news, French astronaut Thomas Pesquet and U.S. astronaut Shane Kimbrough made their way back inside the International Space Station after going on a spacewalk to complete the installation of new solar panels to boost power supplies to the ISS. Take a look. Hey, That's it for tonight's broadcast. Thank you for joining us. And at the end of the day, as I always say, there remains so much more to be grateful for. Check out our uh, news on our website on eaglenews.net and eaglenews.ph. And check out our videos on our YouTube channel. And that's it. I'm Alma Angeles. Thank you for joining us. Stay safe, everyone. We live in interesting times. is supported by Protect Plus Gold, a broad spectrum disinfectant, kills 99.5% of disease causing germs and works in 10 minutes.